All right, so I'm assuming that all of us got the paper and the pen and we are ready to roll. So welcome guys to Critical Path and Float PMP Clinic episode three, right? Time for us to get started. After this, you actually develop a schedule where you have the schedule baseline and this is where adjustments have to be made using you know, critical path method, which is called the CPM, the critical path method, and the float calculations. Let's take one of the most common relationships that everybody is aware of, and that is activity A finishes and only then activity B stops, right? So what does it mean? Activity A should have finished before activity B stops, and therefore we call it FS, or finish to stop. The reason I'm constantly repeating is so that you actually write it down and so that you don't get confused with float. I have no clue why, but apparently people do get confused between lag and float. So I just want to clarify right now. So A and the predecessor. Predecessor means what is before this activity. That's called a predecessor. So before A, there is stop, which means that A is the very first thing that you do. So probably you'll have to make a start node and immediately after that, you have the A node, right? That's basically what it means, right? And then we say, okay, there's another activity called B, right? And B actually happens after A because B's predecessor is A, right? So what does it mean, right? It means that immediately after A, you would have Another thing called B, all right? So we've started making the network diagram. Be careful of this. So that's it. That's how you make it. That's how an entire network diagram is made. Perfect. 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 This is the kind of, see, look at your confidence, right? You will never go wrong. Now 25, if this is 25, this becomes 26. And therefore, plus 8 will give you how much? <laughs> Some people just wrote everything in advance, right? Perfect. So this is so easy, right? So that's it, right? So 26 plus 8 will give you 34, minus 1 will give you 33. Now let's do some questions on float, all right? Okay. This is a very simple question, right? <laughs> you have, it's not even difficult, right? It's, it's like, <laughs> that's the only thing that matches, right? So you guys are 100% correct. That's exactly what it is. So it is uh, the critical path method. Well, that happens. Uh, so basically what happens, the total float is better than free float because it does not affect your project entirely. So when we go back to the question, now tell me which is better, total float or free float? And you'll realize that this is better, right? Because working on a task with a total float, total floats are always better than free float because free float Uh, uh, the 15 minutes before when you, uh, when you enter the exam from your home, uh, what is going to happen? The proctor is going to tell you how to use that software. So learn at that point of time, just double confirm how to save it, how to go back, right? So it's just like a normal paper, except it's on screen. So you have to use your mouse uh, or your touchpad to open it, right? Or, you know, things like that. All right, not bad. Thank you guys, thank you very much, and it was a pleasure meeting all of you.